We are the keepers of the flame, the sacred order. Let the ceremony begin. And today, Faithful Acolytes, we take a look at this. And what this is from Louisiana Hot Sauce, it is the perfect hotter hot sauce. So, I've done the Crystal Extra Hot, I've done the Franks, I think they called that Extra Hot also, and then there was a Texas Pete Hotter, which I've done as well. And so it's no surprise that these guys are going to get into the act as well. Another of the big time national sort of famous sauces, uh, as ubiquitous as any of the other ones. You see this on shelves a lot. The Louisiana hot sauce brand. Uh, six fluid ounces here. Usually two, three bucks for one of these bottles. Can't go wrong in the price. There is something with this sauce, though, that the other... It's a, it, there's a differentiation, I think, with all the sauces. Uh, Crystal is a lot more abrasive. Frank's is... Their extra, their extra Hot is actually surprisingly not bad. It's probably the best of those types, actually. Uh, I don't like re Frank's regular hot sauce. I think it's not very good. Just really super basic and plain. Uh, Texas Pete, I think their regular one is fantastic. I think it's a really good sauce. Their extra hot, though, with the extract in it was noxious. And Louisiana has their own sort of issue. We'll get into that here shortly. But let's look at the ingredients first. So we have the aged red peppers, which are cayenne uh, and habanero. So we have habanero and cayenne. So... I don't know what the ratio is. This reads a lot more like a cayenne sauce. We've got the distilled vinegar and salt. So that last ingredient is, is where I really have a problem with Louisiana style sauces because I find them all inevitably overly salty for my taste, including this one. So that's kind of the the hallmark, I think, of them. I do really respect this idea, though. And I mentioned this, this uh, in the written review, which is available in the description down below. I mentioned it there as well, that I really respect the idea of where, what they're doing here. The other three I mentioned all used extract. Here we have Louisiana is just using a hotter pepper to make it hotter than the normal stuff. I, I really commend them for that. For me, I greatly respect the sauce makers that don't use extracts and will just use hotter peppers to deliver more heat to their product. I, I really think that's the way that it should be happening. A uh, restrictor cap is built in to the bottle itself here. But, uh, it, and that, I don't think I finished any of those sauces. I definitely didn't with the Crystal or the Texas Pete. Frank's, I don't recall. I think I came actually pretty close with that one, but I don't think I actually finished all of it. This one I will, because I quite like what they're doing with this sauce. So you can see it is a little bit on the thicker side as well, comparatively. I mean, it's still obviously watery, but you can see it's much deeper red hue than we see a lot of times. It does orange out a little bit at the edge, but uh, def gorgeous looking coloration here. You can see there is a lot of mash that has gone into this particular sauce. This, this looks the way that Louisiana style cayenne sauces should look in my view. They're, they're pretty much as right on perfect as they, as they could be. So, all right, let's get on into it.
little slight amount of staining on the spoon there. Little, a little bit of heat. Certainly more than normal for this style of sauce. Flavor is really good. One of the things, I think they actually had a, a few years back, if I'm remembering right, they had a habanero version of the Louisiana style sauce. That might just be what this is. Just they, they repackaged it with hotter. I haven't seen the other one for a really long time. If I had to guess, I'm, I'm assuming that's probably what happened because that now's a good time, right? Because the last couple of years we've seen an influx of hotter type products. So, so now is now's a good time to, to trot this baby back on out again. So not a lot of Tabasco also did a habanero. And, and for me, that one sort of, I think, overemphasized the negative attributes of habanero. And habanero is a pepper I've had a love and hate relationship with for always. I have grown to come more to terms with it, but it is still somewhat hit and miss for me. Like, habanero is not an automatic win. Not like Scotch Bonnet almost always is, Ghost almost always is, Seven Bonnet almost always is. Habanero, there are still some where I get some misfires. And it's just kind of fascinating to me, the uh, the differences, you know, with a lot of the peppers. Uh, scorpions, for instance, most of them are misses for me. And there, there's a few there's a few good ones out there. Usually, though, it's not a straight scorpion sauce, the ones I wind up liking more often. And Reaper is interesting because Reaper I generally like. But Reaper is one that will come back on you. That pepper will come back to uh, to haunt you and, and make its make itself known. So, all right, this one let's uh, let's get this out of the way here while we get some food stuffs coming in. All right, so the first thing here is these are not wings; they're meant to look like wings, but what they are is they're uh, they're cauliflower wings from Bird's Eye. Uh, I saw these the other day on the shelf and. I thought, you know, what the hell? And uh, so, so I got, so the, I put their, whatever their sauce is on some of these. Here's some plain ones. And uh, let, let me try the plain one first. <laughs> this is, um, well, first of all, it's overpriced for what it is. This is just basically breaded cauliflower chunks. It doesn't particularly look like wings to me, but whatever. Cauliflower is kind of the in thing, I think still to an extent. All right, here's with their, some sort of sauce that came with it. I'm just gonna try that just to get a baseline. It's basically, ew. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Oh, man. That is bad. The sauce is dreadful. It's it's sort of trying to be like a creamy wing sauce, like a, a buffalo wing sauce or cayenne wing sauce, but it's just bad. I really wish I wouldn't have put that in that many of them. Well, it'd be a good test for this. Also, also, we're going back to Devour. And this time we've got a buffalo chicken mac and cheese. I saw that one and I thought, you know, I haven't had... So we have actual chicken. I thought, you know, we haven't had... We do have steam though. I thought we haven't had... I haven't had a buffalo mac and cheese. I don't know if this is new from them or what have you here, but... This might be overly hot for me to try to eat. I'm going to try to get a baseline here, though. I've got a little chunk of chicken. I, I don't like how this sauce looks. This sauce looks kind of gnarly. There's blue cheese as well in this. So we have blue cheese. We got the sort of fried chicken chunks. And we got the macaroni, which is the shell macaroni, plus, of course, the buffalo cheese sauce. So uh, let's, let's try to get a baseline here. Oh, 
Uh, to the good side, though, the chicken does seem like it is real chicken and not sponge chicken, not particle chicken. All right. So, one of the great things about cayenne style sauces is they can really fix a lot of food problems. And I think that's why it's one of the more popular sauces out there. Well, additional, I mean, cayenne sauces, I think, are they're among my favorites, if not my favorite outright. And, but I think part of it is, they're, I don't think they're super expensive to make. I think that might be the big part of it. However, they also can, like the Red Devil, still probably the best flavored cayenne style, Louisiana style I've ever had. That thing... It's kind of like the pure death from Blair's and that it, it can make anything palatable. It is such a strong force for good flavor that even if it becomes a dominant flavor, it still is tasty enough that you can save, you know, what you're having. And depending on what area of the country you grow up in, uh, the Midwest in particular, you probably are going to need some flavor saving with a lot of the foods there. Because they're very, very heavy. They're very rich. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Wow. See, perfect, perfect example. But if you're not a fan of the big time, heavy, rich flavors, as, as I'm not particularly, despite being from that area, this can really save the day in a lot of cases. All right, this is with that awful sauce on it. This is a funny idea. I mean, certainly I've had breaded cauliflower before. I've not seen anyone calling it wings. But I almost feel like there should be cheese in this, though. This is a really dumb way to get veggies in, I must say. Kind of expensive and dumb. It's nothing like a wing. I think the propensity for cauliflower and everything, not necessarily the best food trend. Better than broccoli because I think cauliflower is a lot tamer flavor wise, but it's almost never, you know, this is a problem with a lot of vegetable based stuff. It's almost never the same as what it's trying to replace. In terms of a substitute, it's just too far away. It's like getting a holiday fruitcake. And because you forgot to get a loaf of bread, you make a sandwich using the fruitcake instead of sandwich bread. It, it can substitute, I guess, but it's still, it's just not going to be the same. And it will be too far distant. So much of food, I think, is about scratching that itch. There's a hunger component, but a lot of the holidays in particular is about scratching a particular sort of, you know, food itch. And if it doesn't do it, then... You're just, it, it's just going to keep building until you do scratch that itch. I'm sure they were trying to keep this vegetarian, but had they thrown cheese in here, these would have been a couple million times better. As it is, they were... You know, I try to have different stuff in these videos when I can. And as it is, it's fun to try new stuff, but, but these I, I would not return to.
I mean, this stuff, this works fine with it. And this is, so I didn't mention that. The heat level, I did in the written review, but not here yet. The heat level here is, is almost exactly what I hoped for with this style of sauce. You can get a little bit of build. A little bit of spikiness to it, so it feels like you're eating an actual hot sauce. As opposed to a pepper flavored vinegar. But mostly it's a, it's a flavor thing. My sole complaint about this is I just wish their sauces were less salty. This one is certainly less salty than the um, than the uh, double barrel, but so that little bit I had there in the spoon was I think that was like ten percent of the daily sodium intake. I don't pay huge attention to that stuff. <laughs> I suppose someday I will have to, but until that day, it's one area of a label I don't need to read. Or at least I'm not reading. Maybe I do need, I don't know. But it just, it, I, I detect that with the palette. I don't know how it compares to other sauces. To me, that's just where it's reading. I mean, this this sauce has resurrected two not very good things. You know what? I'm being stupid here. What if we have some cheese? It's not a great cheese sauce. This, this for me is a bust. This thing from Devour. I'm not a fan of this at all. But maybe we can... It's too big of a bite. I can't stuff all that in my face. I can, but... I should have a little grace here, right? Try to, anyway. Okay. Alright, so here we got about the cauliflower and some of this noodles and sauce. Better. Still not great, but it's better. And these, the proportions are a little bit bad on these cauliflowers because you get some things that are just straight up cauliflower and nothing else. I don't mind cauliflower. I've eaten it, I've, I've used the sauce to make a raw veggie tray uh, accompaniment and I've had cauliflower on camera in some of the videos here, I don't mind it. When it's cooked though, to me it's really bland and if you have a lot of concentration that's not flavored, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't find that favorable. It is without favor from me, sir. Oh, madame. Whosoever shall be watching. Wow. I mean, I realize my tastes are probably not consistent with the general public's, but I really question some of the tasters. Like, Kitchen comes up with this, and who gives this a green light? Who says, yeah, let's put this. Let's throw this in packaging and put it in shelves across grocery stores, which I'm guessing means that they're making 
Well, there's a lot of grocery stores, right? So my assumption is they're making anywhere from ten to 50,000 units of whatever the flavor is at a minimum, I'm guessing. I, I don't know that. But I would guess somewhere in that territory. But I, I don't know how they do that with something like this. The blue cheese might as well not even have been there. It's a shame. I like the concept. But execution was... I guess this is a uh, frozen food review type video, though. <laughs> That's just bonus coverage, right? Because I, I usually talk about the food I'm eating, it, whether it's any good or not, and all that kind of thing. So might as well throw it in. But neither one of those two things I would get again, nor would I recommend anybody else get. Although I think with the if the cauliflower thing was reasonably priced, you could have a nice hot cheese dip to go with that, that that would not be bad. That would not be bad at all. But, uh, yeah, as far as, far as the devourer, that's a, could not be more of a miss. All right, so about this sauce. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if this was slightly less salty, this would probably be in, in my, my, maybe my top two or three of uh, Louisiana-style cayenne sauces, and I've had a ton of them. It's one of the types I always keep on hand. I love it maybe more than any other style. And right now, for instance, if you go and look at, you can see my actual fridge door in the quarter four 2022 wing thing. If you look there though, there was only one cayenne style. There's no Mexican style sauces. There's only one cayenne style sauce and that was this one because I was in the midst of reviewing it. But generally, I don't usually keep more than one. I'll just go through all of one. It takes quite a bit for me to throw sauces of this style out, which should really tell you about the Crystal, the Franks, and the uh, Texas Pete, because I did not finish, I don't think, any of those. Uh, the like I said, Franks came fairly close. And that one I think I just got tired of before, uh, before I got to the end, because it, it wasn't, Franks to me is not a great flavor. Which meant that when they added extract to it, it what they weren't impairing the so they weren't harming the sauce that much because it wasn't that great to begin with. Texas Pete, on the other hand, is a great tasting sauce, and they butchered that with extract. And Crystal was just kind of Crystal is not it, to me. I don't really love abrasive sauces, so so that one is kind of more of a use in a pinch anyway for me. But this one, this approach is right. This is what you do. You put in a hotter pepper if you want the sauce to be hotter, but you still keep as much of the trapping of the original sauce intact as possible. This does a phenomenal job of it. Uh, like I said, this brand is just a little bit overly salty for me, but other than that, this is definitely an, an excellent, excellent version of a Louisiana-style cayenne sauce. This one has habanero, but uh, it, it is not... I don't think it's heat prohibitive for most people out there. So if you're feeling like your table, your Louisiana style cayenne sauce, your table sauce, it needs a little bit of a punch. This is absolutely the ticket. It, it puts her, I think, almost exactly right where it needs to be. So high, high praise. Uh, definitely, I'm, I'm extremely pleased. I looked around for this sauce. You might have to do a little bit of digging, but I, it is well worth it. No question about that. So there it is, the Louisiana Hotter Hot Sauce. Now go forth in peace to serve the flame.